Hey everybody and welcome to the shop. Today I'm going to do a video on my preferred way of restoring headlight lenses on a vehicle. I've used lots of different methods and different products over the years and this is what I think works best. If this video helps you out, please give it a thumbs up, hit that bell for notifications and don't forget to subscribe. It's really common for today's plastic headlight lenses to get really sun faded and etched up. Not only is this a cosmetic issue, but it's a safety concern as well. They can get so foggy that it becomes really difficult to drive at night. So let me show you my preferred method to get those nice and crystal clear again. As you can see, these lights are very fogged up, cloudy, hard to see through. Even with the bright sunlight coming through the door right now, um, very hazy. At night, these are not going to project light well. They're not going to illuminate a good distance. See how hazy that is? So we're going to get these cleaned up looking brand new again. Takes a little bit of time, but the results are definitely worth it. I'm going to back this out in the sun or into the shade actually. I'm going to just back it out of the buildings. We need to use a lot of water. I don't want to make a mess inside the building. So I'm going to back it out just outside the door. The product I like to use the most for polishing headlights is this Light Right kit. is kit number LRK-300. This is an extremely nice product. I've used lots of different options over the years and this is the one that I really really enjoy using. It's the fastest and gives you the best results. Can't go wrong with that. Everything you need is inside this kit. The only additional things I use is a squirt bottle with water, a water hose, masking tape, masking paper, and some rubbing alcohol. I'll show you how I get the car prepped. So the first thing I do is I tape up all these edges so that when I'm sanding this lens, I'm not accidentally hitting any of the painted body parts and taking off the clear coat or the paint even. So let's get these taped up just so as I'm sanding, I don't want to intentionally run into that tape edge, but in case I do run off the light, the paint's protected. So let's go ahead and slip some tape in that seam. extra minutes of protecting the vehicle is totally worth it it'll save you a headache so the job's not going to come out any better than your prep work so there's some things you just can't cut corners on this is one of them all right, so that's good enough now for the sanding. We're going to tape it up a lot better when it's time to spray that final clear coat on here. But now I can safely sand this and not risk hurting the painted bumper or fender. When you open up your kit, you're going to find the ultraviolet protection clear coat. This is like the magic sauce. You'll see what it does at the end some instructions. There's going to be two pieces of sandpaper, 600 grit, some um, tack cloths, and a pair of rubber gloves, and alcohol wipes. All I want for right now is one piece of the sandpaper. I'm going to fold it in half and tear that in half. This is actually all you need for the entire job. That second piece of paper you don't need. So I'll use one on one light, one half on the other. 
set that up there for now. Set the paint in there. Okay. First thing is we need to get this light nice and wet. Got the garden hose. Just soak the whole thing down. Got our sandpaper, that piece that we cut in half, tore in half. I'm gonna fold that in half so it's great on both sides. Get that nice and wet. Now, holding the paper flat, you wanna sand back and forth, not in circles. Do not sand it in circles. When you initially start sanding it, this nasty, sludgy stuff's gonna come off the surface. Make sure you get up to the edges very well. You know that tape's there, but don't run off that edge on purpose. That sludge gets um, really sticky. So rinse that off, rinse your paper. Start off by just doing a full sand on the entire light and getting it to a consistent um, sanded surface. There's not any spots that are particularly sanded more or less, and there's no spots that you missed. Right now I'm concentrating on this bottom edge. Come up through the middle again, over the top. It's getting sticky from all the mud. Rinse all that mud off. I'm gonna change sides here. So I can do this edge here. It's okay to sand in the opposite direction you were sanding. You just can't do circles. So I was going this way, now I'm going this way. As long as you're sanding in a linear motion, it's okay, just no circles. Make sure you get up into these corners. That bottom edge real good. Get that front edge. The reason I have this squirt bottle, in case I just need a little bit of extra water starts to dry, I do a quick rinse. You don't have to get the hose out every time. Well, if there's a bunch of mud build up and I can't really see the um, surface finish from the scratches, just rinse that mud off. Get down to this edge real nice. If you miss any spots, when you're finished, it's gonna be super, super obvious. So really make sure you get into these corners well. Okay, we have a pretty consistent sand. I'm gonna rinse this off. Rinse that off real good, rinse my paper off real good. I'm gonna evaluate the finish. And it's very consistent. Now this is where you need to start evaluating, kind of looking through the sanding, looking down into the plastic. You'll see like these weird granule lines, almost like rings on a tree. And it's just from the sun fading and hitting the different surfaces and fading sections worse than others, things like that, and the plastic degrading over time. You can sand through all that stuff. If you have any weird spots like that, sand through it, but you have to sand the whole thing. You can't just sand that spot. You gotta sand the whole thing until that one spot's gone. That way the whole thing's consistent. So you're gonna wanna sand each light for about 
15 or 20 minutes. Keep sanding, keep rinsing, being consistent. Don't sand any one spot more than another. Get on all your edges really well. If a light is really, really bad shape, you might be sanding that light for about a half an hour. What it really comes down to is the more time you send, spend sanding, the better the results are gonna be no matter what. So your arm's gonna be tired. And since you can't use a circular motion, you can't use any small sanders or buffers or anything to do this. You gotta sand it by hand in a linear motion. You have to. Ask me how I know. Well, one, it says in the instructions. Uh, but two, I had an employee that thought he was smarter than the instructions and thought he was smarter than my instruction. So, what did he do? Circular motions. The light came out horrific. Once you put that clear coat on, man, is it a lot of work to redo it. So do it right the first time. Okay, I'm gonna spend a few more minutes sanding this, and then we'll get to the next step. When you finally get to the end of the sanding of each light, I like to take the paper, get it nice and clean, get the light nice and clean. Just do some nice, full passes across the whole thing, starting at the top, working your way down. Instead of having spots where it's like the sides are this way, this is that way, this way, that way, this way, even though they were all in a linear motion, which is okay. At the very end, I like to just do light, nice light passes, sweeping around, getting all the scratches facing the same direction. At this point, I'm not really trying to remove material. I'm just trying to get a uniform texture to the light, to the lens. So this light is done being sanded. I'm gonna give it a good rinse. I need to get the other light to the same spot. So that first piece of sandpaper is done. I'm going to use the other piece of sandpaper for the other light. Something else I like to do is this tape that has been on here during the wet sanding process. I do not use this tape as my masking for the paint. When this tape gets wet and then dries, it's nasty stuff. Plus when it's soaking wet, it's hard to dry and all the edges and stuff. So I don't want to risk any water being trapped under here and getting in the paint. I'm going to take this tape off, dry the light, and I'll remask for the painting process. I'm going to go ahead and get this tape off. I'm going to get the other light in the same spot as this one. And then we'll start filming again. Uh, you can see on this light some of that halo effect I was referring to. The differences in the plastics. As you're sanding it, you're going to see that start to go away. Once you have it all sanded and dried off, you just have a nice uniform haziness over the entire lens. All consistent amounts of similar scratching. No deep gouging. All the hazing in the lens, all those spots are gone and it's very, very consistent. At this point, you want to take an air, blow, air nozzle and blow out all the seams so there might be standing water. All right, so we got both lights all dry. Brought it in out of the sun so I can mask this up inside without a glare. See what's going on real well. So tape it up very, very well. You don't want to get overspray on the bumper or the fender.
try to slip the tape underneath the lens between the crack and the bumper. That way you know that edge is protected real well. You're going to mask off the engine bay so you don't get ever spray all over the rad support. Just make it look a lot more professional. Okay, now once you have one good band of tape, go around and double up the width of the tape. Okay, go ahead and get both lights to the same stage. Once you have both lights taped up, you're going to mask off the car. You can use body shot masking paper, or this is carpet protection paper that you can buy at Home Depot. For when you're working on your house, you can lay this on the carpet and not track in your muddy feet. Paper's cheap, just use plenty of paper, cover everything really good. Go ahead and mask off the entire bumper area, including the engine bay, because this paint will go everywhere. All right, so we have the car sufficiently masked off. I'm confident we're not going to get any overspray on any of the painted parts. Next thing we need to do is we need to wipe this down with alcohol really well to get your hand oils and anything off the lens. It comes with these nice tack cloths. And they give you alcohol wipes, but it's not sufficient enough, so I use rubbing alcohol on a lint-free towel. And scrub the light with this alcohol-soaked lint-free towel. Get all the sanding dust, hand oils, and everything off this light really, really good. Make sure you get the edges very well. And after you do this, you cannot touch this lens again. Don't touch it with your fingers, don't touch it with anything. Use a different lint-free towel for each light. Okay, the lights are completely wiped down with alcohol. And they dried off very nicely. There's no wet spots left. Now here's the most important part of this entire job. We have to pull the car out in direct sunlight. You cannot do it on an overcast day, even if it's sunny out, but there's clouds in the sky. Bright overcast day is not good enough. It has to be direct sunlight. You see this one's still drying off from the alcohol. You can go ahead and pull this out into the sun. Okay, so here we are. We're outside in the bright sunlight. You have to have direct sunlight, extremely important. I've even tried painting this inside and then quickly backing out of the shop into the sunlight. It won't dry. It'll stay sticky for weeks. You have to spray it in the sunlight. Let it cure in the sunlight. You cannot put it in on inside and then pull it out. This stuff dries extremely fast. If you do it inside, just in the 10 seconds it takes to back it out, it already gassed off some of the stuff that's required to make this cure properly. It will not dry right. Trust me, I've done it more than once. In the direct sunlight, shake the can really good. 
Now you have to spray it fast and even. It fans out in a nice flat line, half overlap. If you miss a spot, you really can't go back and spray over it after about three seconds. So make sure you get good coverage on the first time. Because it dries so fast and you can't paint on top of itself. So you have to get it on the first try. See, if you have to, without spraying, practice your sweeps. You can't do like here and then do here. Consistent all the way across, all the way back. Across, back, across, back. You've got to get it on the first shot. It's the only part about this kit that's a little bit of a pain. It is so particular how you put it on. It's one of the reasons I'm making this video, so you can learn from the mistakes I've found over the years. Do a quick little test spray. Okay, here we go. Half overlap, consistent swipes. Okay. That light is gonna be dry and hard as a rock in a matter of minutes. One coat, half overlap, one shot. You can't go back and touch anything up. You have to get it in the first try. There's no redos on this. If you screw up, you gotta let it completely dry and sand it off and start over. Let's do the other one. Okay, so we got that light painted as well. We're gonna let this sit outside in the sunlight for about a half an hour. You can test on your tape. This is already just down to a light tack. It's only been about two minutes. We'll give this a couple minutes in the sun. As soon as it gets to the point where the overspray is on that tape, is, is a heavy tack, starting to get pretty hard. At that point, I'm gonna unmask the vehicle. I'm gonna let it sit outside in the sun for about a half an hour, and those lights will be hard as a rock. Okay, it's been about five minutes. I'm gonna test on this tape. This is pretty hard with just a light tack. So I'm gonna unmask this car, and then let it sit in the sun for about another 20 minutes or so. Obviously be very careful that nothing touches the lens. It is pretty cured, light tack, but still Try your best not to touch it. Carefully take all the tape off. I like to take the tape off while it's still just a light tack because this paint does dry so rock hard. I don't want the headlight and the tape to kind of become one and risk keep pulling the paint on the lens when I unmask it or having a hard time picking the tape off because it's got such a candy shell on it at that point. All right, so there you have it. That's how I refinish headlights to get rid of all that hazy and fogginess with the product Lightrite. I really like that product. It comes out great every time. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Let's take a look at how they came out.